Hi, welcome back. In the previous video we looked at the idea that decomposition is a good thing, especially if we want to go to higher normal forms, and we focused on the aspect of having a lossless decomposition. Lossless was a good feature. And the second thing we're interested in is preserving dependencies. We want to make sure that all functional dependencies are preserved on each of the relation subschemas. Now let me show you a process of how we go about figuring that. Let's look at an example of how we would preserve dependencies. And what I have behind me here is an example from the previous video. So we have R, A, B, C, D, E. Same functional dependencies, A, B function determines C, C function determines E, B function determines D, and E function determines A. And finally we have our same relational subschema, B, C, D, and A, C, E. Well, here's what we're going to do to determine whether or not the functional dependencies are preserved. Now, it's important that all the functional dependencies must be preserved. If one is not preserved, forget about it. We say it's, you know, the functional dependencies are not preserved. So, everyone must be preserved. Well, let's take a look. We're going to work with this variable, work variable called Z and we set it equal to, in this case, the left-hand side of the first functional dependency we're going to look at. So z is equal to ab. And the idea is to keep adding attributes to z, and we keep repeating this process until eventually we get the right-hand side, in this case c. If we don't get the c, then it's not preserved. Well, here's what we're going to do. We take the Z, which in this case is AB, and we intersect it with the first subschema. So we have Z intersect R1, and what is that equal to? Well, AB and BC is B. Okay, so we've done the intersection, came up with B. The next thing we do is figure what is B closure, and B closure would be B. D. Okay? Now with this closure, we intersect once again with R1, and BD intersect R1 is BD. We union that back with the Z, so Z now equals A, B, D. Okay? Now we've added one attribute here in terms of D, but we've not gotten the C, so we need to continue. So we have looked at the first one, R1. We now look at the next subschema, R2. So we pick up where we left off. Z is A, B, D. And we're going to do Z intersect R2. And what do they have in common? A, B, D, A, C, E is just A. We take the closure of A, which is just A. Well, we find out that A closure is just A. A intersect R2 is just A. So we don't add anything to Z. Now, if I continue, I repeat the process again. At this point, we don't have the C in Z, so it's not preserved so far. However, we started with A, B, and we added a D. We made changes, so we have to repeat the whole process again. And by repeating the process, I mean starting with R1. So we do Z intersect R1, and what is that? That is B, D closure. Now we figure the <coughs> we figure the BD closure which is going to be BD. We intersect BD with BCD which will give us just BD. We add the BD to Z. We already have the BD so nothing changes. So applying it to R1 did not change Z. Now we do Z intersect R2, 
which is equal to A. We figure A closure, which once again is A. So we've not made any changes. RZ is still ABD. So in this case, it is not preserved. So what we observe is this decomposition does not preserve these functional dependencies. We could stop at this point and say that it is not preserved, but it is indeed lossless because we just did that. Let's do a couple more just to get practice with this. Let's do C function determines E. So the Z starts equal to the left hand side, which is C. We do, in this case, C intersect R1. And what is C intersect R1? Just C. We figure C closure. What is C closure? C E A E. So we have A C E. We do A C E intersect R1. What does that give us? Nothing, just the C. So Z is still equal to C. Now we've applied R1. We go through and look at R2. Well, the Z did not change, so we start off with Z equal to C. We do the letter C, in this case, intersect A, C, E. And that's equal to C. What's the closure? A, C, E. Intersect A, C, E with A, C, E. Z is now A, C, E. And what do we observe? Aha! The E is now in the Z, so this would, that functional dependency would be preserved, but as I said before, this one wasn't, just an exercise. Let's take a look at the B function determines D. We set our Z equal to the left hand side, then we do left hand side, or the, whatever the Z is, intersect B, C, D. We want the closure of that, which is uh, B closure equals B closure equals B D. Now our Z now equals the previous Z plus the B D. And it has the right hand side. So that functional dependency is preserved. Now finally we look at E function determines A. And we want to see whether that functional dependency is preserved. So we start off with z equal to e, the left hand side. We do e or e intersect r1. And we note e intersect r1, they have nothing in common. Okay? So when they have nothing in common, that means the z will not change. The z will still be what it was before we started. Now we do Z intersect R2 and that closure which gives us E closure and what is E closure? EA. Now we do EA intersect R2 EA intersect ACE gives us EA. So Z will now equal Z plus the EA or Z equals EA. Since it contains the A, therefore that functional dependency will be preserved. So three out of four are preserved, but we'd say overall the set of functional dependencies are not preserved because of the one violation. Here's a nice shortcut that will make your life easier. As you go through and you look at the functional dependency to see whether it's preserved, here's the question I ask myself. If the left-hand side and the right-hand side attributes collectively, if they're contained in one of the subschemas, it is preserved. You don't have to do any of this uh, testing like we did. Make sure you take a look at the notes because I've got a lot more information than I've covered in this particular video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.